welcome to another Design Clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn. For today's cards, we're going to be creating a pair of cards. Now, my initial plan was to create two versions of the same card, one on a white background and one on a cream background. However, things went awry and we ended up with this version as our second version. So things didn't go as planned during uh, creation, but I channeled my inner Kelly Latavola and I said, we're not starting over. So let's take a look at how this came together. Today's cards are using the new Hello and Thanks stamp set. Now, if some of these images look familiar, they should. We recently released a solid floral stamp layering stamp set with Simon Says Stamp for Stamp Timber. And that was a get it while it's here and once it's gone, it's gone. Well, those images were actually created from these images. So if you liked those, but you didn't get a chance to grab yours, this is a great set as an alternative. Now, what I did was I stamped out myself a guide. I stamped out myself a guide. That doesn't sound right for some reason. I stamped myself out a guide <laughs> using a light ink. And this is going to be like my template. I've put 80 pound Nina solar white cardstock into my mini Misty here. And then I'm gonna use that to line up my stamps so that I can get precise placement. Now you'll notice here I am offsetting it a little bit for my guide and that's because when I stamped it out I noticed that I, I wanted that one to come out just a little bit further. So I can make any of those adjustments at this time. I'm going to go ahead and ink this up with Memento Tuxedo Black ink and that's because we're using Copics today and it is a Copic friendly ink. My lines won't bleed and it won't bleed into the colors. So that's very important. I'll go ahead and replace my template, line up my second image, and again, ink that up and stamp it. Now, if I don't get a perfect image the first time, the great thing about using a stamp positioning tool is that you can re-ink and re-stamp. To start off, I'm only going to do my flower clusters because I want to get those colored before I come in and stamp my sentiments on top. Now I also want to do that little bird and my plan was to cut him up, cut him up, cut him out. <laughs> I don't want to cut him up. My plan was to cut him out and pop him up using the companion dies that are also available for this set. So on a separate piece of paper, I'm just stamping out a couple little birds here. I always stamp more than one just in case I mess up. And here's a quick shot of all the colors I'll be using on both cards today. I normally don't write these down. I just pick up whatever I feel like coloring with at the time, and then I can never remember what I used. So here's a quick shot for you, and then I'll also have them listed in the description box below. So for the main flowers, we're gonna start with RV69, RV25, and Y38. Now, typically, when using Copics, you blend color families. I wanted to mess around with blending uh, totally different color families and you can see there I've already got ink on my white panel this always happens um, again I'm channeling my inner Kelly here and we're not starting over I'm gonna hope that by the time we get all this color on this card that's not gonna show up um, you're just not gonna notice it that's that was my hope and <laughs> I figured if that didn't work I would use a sanding block or something to try to get it off and if all else fails it's a greeting card so <laughs> it's not a Monet. So here I've laid down, I'm, I'm going to mess around with the order in which I lay these colors down each time until I find out exactly which order I like the best. But I'm blending out this yellow and this pink. And basically what that's going to give me is more of like a corally color. I really wanted to capture the autumnal fall colors and how they just kind of glow and almost look like the landscape is on fire sometimes. I really wanted to try to capture that. So that's why I decided to try to mix some of these color families. And I'm going with that yellowish orange, a bright vibrant pink, and then a more wine or Bordeaux color. So that's that was my thought process here. Some of them come out looking better than others. I will tell you when I get to the other bouquet, I lay down a full wash of the honey color and then come in with the pink, and I like that much better. But again, we're working through this, we're not gonna start over, and we're gonna hope that at the end, once everything is done, it's all gonna blend and it's gonna look good together. And if I'm being honest, this video almost didn't happen. There were so many mishaps making these two cards, but I figured a lot of you like to see the mistakes, you like to see how we recover. You don't want to just see the end product. And I thought this was the perfect opportunity because a lot of times this looks like a hot mess. 
um, if we're being, if we're just putting it out there. There were many times that I was like, this is not a good look. But again, at the end, I think it all worked out and I think it all looks good. So I, I was actually really happy with how it turned out. And right about here, I'm going to pause. You will see me stay still for a minute. And I'm thinking, I don't like this. But I'm like, nope, put in the rest of the color. So we're going to move on to the leaves. And for that, I'm going to use YG63 and B99. This is also a great example of how you don't have to have every single color from every single color family. Um, a lot of the times you can use a red to deepen up certain areas of a green because they are um, complementary colors. Or you can use a deep blue. If you have a deep blue, you can use that as your shadow portion on your greens as well. Using this blue here is also going to tie in nicely because I'm going to use that same B99 on some of the leaves in the rest of the bouquet. So it's going to harmonize all of the colors within the bouquet. I think this is another thing that kind of makes the whole thing work in the end, even though any individual element isn't spectacular <laughs> when viewed as a whole, they just kind of work. So I'm doing a lot of experimentation with color and technique on these cards. Um, this there's way too much ink on those main flowers. So you'll see that I kind of go a little bit lighter or a lot bit lighter with the rest of the coloring. If you oversaturate the paper, it will start to bleed and it will, believe it or not, start to make that memento ink bleed. Um, it's a Copic safe ink and it shouldn't. However, if you saturate that paper with ink like I've done, <laughs> it'll bleed, trust me. So I've decided to uh, take it back a few steps and be a little, a little less generous with the ink on the rest of the image here. I'm pulling that RV69 in again and using that on the other little leaves here. Again, this will just harmonize those colors. And you saw that I added a little blue underneath on a couple of them. I wanted to see if I could push it more toward the purple. It wasn't really making a noticeable difference, so I abandoned that. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in these little filler flowers with a little bit of the blue because I'm going to be using that blue in some of the leaves on the other bouquet. I wanted to make sure that I included it on this one as well. That way we could create a little color balance between the left and the right side. And then for that last flower, I wanted some of that very vibrant honey color. So I'm going to use that with just a little bit of the darker yellow at the base. And that'll just add that little punch. At this point, I'm still not loving this card. I'm still teetering on whether or not we're going to actually use this. But I'm looking at those main flowers and they've lost the, they're just kind of muddy there, especially in the center. So I'm trying to figure out what I can do to fix it. And I decide to add a little bit more contrast, especially to the center areas. And I do think that that just that little bit actually did help quite a bit. It gave me back a little bit of that definition where some of those lines had been blown out from all of that ink that we had on the paper. Now I'm going to move on to the second bouquet. Now this one I decided um, less inked on. You need a lot less ink. So I'm going in it a little bit more purposeful with what I learned from the first three. I've laid down that almost solid area of the honey. Then I've added in a little bit of the RV69. Nope, the RV, the pink. We're going to call it the pink because I can't remember what it is. So I've added in a little bit of that, blended it out with the yellow. Now I'm going to add in some of that RV69 and I'm going to use less of it, much less of it this time than I did the first time. And then I'm going to blend that out with the pink. And then I'm going to come back over and do a wash of the honey. And I really think that that made a big difference. Using, blending out each of those layers in between made a huge difference and made me use less ink because it was easier to blend them out. So I was actually much happier with those. Now for the bird, I decided to use that BG72 as my main color. And these are the two colors I'll be using, the BG72 and the B99. So I'm going to start by putting down a light wash of the BG72. Then I'm going to come in and add a little bit of that B99 just to the shaded areas. 
blend that out with the BG72. Add a little bit more of that B99 in areas that I want to add just a little bit of depth to. And then again, blend that out with the BG72. You'll notice that I'm not going over the entire bird with that BG72. So Copics have a, a translucent quality to them and each layer will build a deeper depth of color. So one layer will be the lightest. You add a second layer of that same color, it'll get a little darker. A third layer even, it'll get darker still. So in order to maintain some lightness, just a little bit of variation between that BG72, I wait until the very end to go over it with one whole layer of BG72. So that's going to give me that natural lightness um, right at the top of his head. So I didn't have to do anything special to get that, I just left that area white until I was done and then I just added one wash of that BG72 over it. And that will finish up my little bird. Now my original plan was to stamp the hello directly onto the card base and then just pop up the little bird. But when I looked at it after it was done, it just looked... It looked weird to me. I was like, why did I die cut this bird? I should have just made this a truly one layer card. So I ended up stamping and then die cutting out that hello as well. It has a matching die in the companion dies and I liked the way that looked much better. However, if I had stamped the bird at this point, I could stamp that bird directly onto the card base and recolor it and this would make a fantastic one layer card. So that's why I left it in here just to show you guys that it does look really pretty. But again, in the end, since I already had the bird colored and die cut, I decided to pop up the hello and the bird. There's the large hello and the large thanks sentiments included in the set, and then there are also a few small sub sentiments. You can either use those to finish off the main sentiment on the front of the card, or you could stamp them on the inside of the card as your inside message and then add your own handwritten note. I've chosen I just miss you, and then on the inside I stamped that's all. So to add some detail to the background, I wanted to do some dry embossing and I'm going to use my dies to do that. However, on this card, I told you this card gave me a lot of trouble. <laughs> I ended up cutting off almost all of it. However, I did use it in its entirety in the second card. So I'm going to show you how I did it on this one. And this isn't a new technique, but it's something I saw again recently on Nicole Spore's YouTube. And I will link to her here uh, up in the upper right hand corner. You should really check her out. She's an amazing card maker. But she kind of reminded me of this technique. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your dies to emboss instead of cut. Excuse my head there. So what I'm doing is I'm taking, uh, this is, it will cut a rectangle with a stitched border. Instead of die cutting it though, I'm going to emboss it. So I've got my magnetic platform, I've got my embossing mat, I've put down my card, I'm gonna put my die facing down. Here you can see I'm just using the ruler from the Misty Creative Corners and I'm making sure that my, um, that my die is in straight and centered. Now your sandwich will depend on the machine you're using, but for this one, I have the Big Shot. I'm using the magnetic platform. I'm using the embossing mat and then the hard embossing mat on top of that. Then I will lay one cardstock shim on the very top and send that through my die cutting machine. This gives me the perfect amount of pressure and the optimal embossing. All that was left was to put the card together and do some final detail touches. Now, I decided that this still felt a little heavy and it needed a little something. It just felt a little... Mm, especially in the center of that main flower. I felt like it needed some brightening. So I pulled out my white gel pen and this is the Sakura Jelly Roll pen. And I'm just going to add some little white dots. The original image had little black dots to indicate the center. So I'm just gonna put those in with my white gel pen. And why stop there? You know, um, more is more, right? So I decided to add a few more details with that white gel pen. This is something that I hadn't really ever tried or done before. So I might have went overboard. I don't, whatever, it is what it is. Um, but it did help to break up some of that heavy color and it did what I was looking for it to do. So at the end of the day, I was like, we're all good. <laughs> Now I just needed to adhere everything. So I adhered the hello and the bird both with 3M foam tape. Here I'm just deciding whether I want to perch it on the L or on the O. In the end, I decided on the O. I felt like it balanced it out better. And then I'm gonna put this to the side and work on the second card. Now this card does not end up like this at the end as you saw in the photos. I do manage to put a big black fingerprint on the edge of the card, which I could not get rid of. 
without trimming the card down. And I progressively trimmed it down further and further until I was finally happy with how it came out. So again, we're putting this one to the side and we'll move on to the second card. Now, like I mentioned, these were the cards that apparently never wanted to be made. <laughs> My original plan was two cards, same colors. However, one on a white background with black stamping, one on a cream background with brown stamping. Now, our dye inks are not Copic safe. However, normally I can heat set them and then color over them with Copics and it's fine. I just try not to go over the lines too much and then I don't get any bleeding. However, we both saw with this particular technique because I was trying to blend colors that were so far from each other, I needed to go over them several times, which resulted in more ink being put down, which resulted in a disaster. Now you've already watched me do this whole thing, so I'm not going to put you through the torture of it again. I'm just gonna give you the highlights of this card, show you where it went wrong, and then show you how it morphed and how I think I did a pretty good job at recovering it. So I've jumped right into like the middle of the Copic coloring here, and you can see how A, my lines, because I'm using so much ink, have started to blow out. And B, because these are such heavy colors, they were just too dark for the coconut husk stamping. It They get lost in a lot of darker colors. That Bordeaux color in the leaves, you can't see any of the detail in it. And it really just gets lost. So between the Copic colors that I used and then the shade of the brown that I stamped in just wasn't a good color combo things are going to end up looking incredibly muddy and I'm losing all of the detail. Now, granted, this isn't a, I mean, it's kind of disastrous, especially that second little bouquet. It's just blobby. So you can see here, I'm, everything is very still because I'm looking at it and I'm like, what am I gonna do with this? Is this salvageable? So <laughs> I've laid down the hello, I'm looking at it. Can I stamp this over it? Is it gonna look any good? I'm just, I'm not confident at this point. And I know I can't stamp it in that brown. That brown is not gonna show up over all of that, that dark color. And these flowers are looking so not pretty. <laughs> so we need to distract. Um, shiny gold things distract. So let's, we'll heat emboss that hello in gold and hopefully that will help. Let's, let's, let's go with that. So I go ahead and heat emboss that, and then I die cut it using the matching companion die. And that is still not looking pretty to me. The lines need to show up more. So maybe if I overstamp it, I don't wanna overstamp it in the brown, cause now I have that gold, and I wanna pull that gold in to the rest of the design. So we're gonna heat emboss. I'm gonna heat emboss in gold over each of the bouquets. Let's hope that I have lined this up correctly, which of course I have not. Um, the stamp was still in the misty. There is no reason why that should not have stamped perfectly over it, but it didn't. So it's just a little offset and it wasn't horrible, but it was more offset than I would have preferred. I actually had to hand line up the second bouquet and I did a better job of restamping that than I did the one that never came out of the Misty. Go figure. Um, but I do like this. This gives me an idea. I'm like, okay, this can work. It's reminding me of stained glass. That gold is looking like the, um, what is it? The melted, what did they melt? Lead? No, it can't be lead. Pewter? I, I don't know. I don't do stained glass, but you know, the melted part that holds all the pieces of stained glass together. And then these colors are so vibrant that it really truly reminds me of stained glass. So I was like, I can work with this. So I line up the second one. I'm crossing my fingers that I can do a better job on this one. And then I heat emboss that. And yes, I did a better job. <laughs> so I tested it with the hello. And it was about this point that I decided I'm going to have to abandon the twinsies card here. Uh, it's just, I'm not liking that right bouquet. And I start playing around with just the one bouquet and the hello. And these, they're, they're going to be cousins now. There's, there's, they're not going to be sisters anymore now. They're going to be cousins. I'm using all the same supplies, so th they're related. It, it'll work. <laughs> I used the companion die and die cut that one bouquet that I liked and I popped it up on 3M foam tape. I did the exact same embossing method on the background. Again, remember these, these guys are related. So I did that embossing. I stamped the, you're kind of the best ever sentiment 
in our coconut husk. And now I'm going to adhere the, the die cut hello using a little bit of foam tape and then some liquid adhesive in, in the areas where it overlaps the flowers. I adhered the entire panel to a side folding A2 card base and that one is now done. And here are the two finished cards. Now, as I mentioned, I got a black fingerprint on the edge of this card, so I had to keep progressively trimming it down until I got it to an area that I liked, which ended up being that first embossing line. I adhered that panel to an A2 card base using a little bit of fun foam, and I actually, I do, I really love how it turned out. Now for the no longer sister card, but now cousin, perhaps second cousin twice removed. Um, <laughs> this one ended up nowhere near like I had originally intended. However, I think all of those little mistakes and mishaps were quite serendipitous because I would not have come up with this design otherwise. And I do really, really like the way it turned out. I'd be interested to know you guys, which one is your favorite? And have you ever had something similar happen? Leave it in the comments below. I would love to read all about it. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, you can find lots of ideas and inspiration on our blog at stampawaywithme.blogspot.com and you can find all of our supplies at wplus9.com as well as at many of your favorite retailers. Don't forget to check the description box below for a list of all of the featured supplies used in today's video. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!